Okay, adult Sunday school, we're going to go over a couple of character traits that are important that seem to be lacking in America, lacking in uh, the church in general, uh, not so much lacking in this church, but it's good for a tune-up, especially for the youngsters. Uh, two of them, one is defer and one is initiative. Uh, Galatians 5, 22 to 23, the fruit of the Spirit, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. So there's nine of them there. The first 20 minutes are only defer. I'm only talking about defer on these questions, okay? Defer. So which of these nine tie into defer? Oh, let, me, let me read you the definition of defer. To submit to another's wishes, opinion, or governance usually through deference or respect. Example, deferred to her father's wishes. Okay? So which of these tie into defer? Not all nine of them do, but a couple do. James? Meekness. Meekness. Meekness would, d d d would yes, does. Because there's times I'll defer a rebuke on somebody and be meek. I do rebuke a lot. If you've seen in street preaching, you know that. But there's times to say, so I don't have to rebuke every comment out there. I'll just stay meek about that. But if you were protecting yourself, you would have to, you'd have to strike back every single time at everything. If, if you're not meek, you will not defer. So therefore, people that aren't meek never defer. People that defer are, are could be could be meek. What else? What other one? Yes. Long suffering. Long suffering. A lot of deference there. We're long suffering toward this Babylonian government. As we, as we uh, pray and sometimes lay hands on people. Um, and uh, that's good. Yep. One other, there's one more I'm looking for on the list here. What's the definition of temperance? What's the synonym for temperance? Self-control. Mm -hmm. New King James is self-control. And I had it memorized wrong for a long time. But the word is temperance. And they're slightly different. But that, that is showing a deference. Yeah. There doesn't quite seem to be an equal amount of ice cream. One bowl will be slightly bigger than the other bowl. So the self-control deference would say, you know what? I'll give you the slightly bigger bowl, Daddy. Thank you. Appreciate that. And you would defer and have self-control and have the, the lower one. And so... Self-control, temperance, very, very important in your life. You will learn it one way or the other. You will learn it the hard way or the easy way. You know, criminals that go to jail for two years, five years, ten years, some of them are not criminals, but most of them are, they have to learn a lot of deference because they're locked in cells, most of them 23 hours a day, get one one hour to walk around the yard and do stuff. Yeah, yeah they're gonna, you're going to learn <laughs> sex before marriage and baby mama drama or STDs or other problems, um, you're going to learn deference later, one way or the other. Okay, let's go to um, Romans 12.10. And James will read that. A synonym for defer in the Bible would be prefer or preferring. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love and honor, preferring one another. Amen. One to another. So would this be toward the fags on the street? Nope. Nope. The, the whores and whoremongers on the street, the druggies, the crackheads, the dirty cops, the dirty politicians? No. Or to rebuke them with long suffering. To other Christians, in honor, preferring one another. You open the door for them, you help serve, you say, how can I, you know, defer my own wishes and gratifications. And many times as you serve, you will be served back. If you're in a real Christian community where everybody's serving, then it's an actual flow and you get served back. But if it's a one-way thing, eventually it'll catch up with you. Let's go to 1 Timothy 5.21. Uh, 
Uh, marriage teaches people deference. I think a lot of youngsters and teenagers don't quite fully get it until they have marriage one day. Having children keeps you deference. Mm -hmm. There's things you're going to have to defer because of having children. Ministry will teach you deference. Street preaching teaches you deference. Persecution teaches you deference. Um, God has lots of tools in this belt. 1 Timothy 5, 21, uh, James. I charge thee before God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the elect angels that thou observe these things without preferring one before another, doing nothing by partiality. Okay. Now this context was um, uh, about, about leadership here. Uh, 19, against an elder received not accusation, but before two or three witnesses, then it rebukes him before all, that others may uh, fear. And then when it says angels there, it's talking about pastors, it's talking about preachers. Just like in Revelation 2 and 3, and to the angel of Laodicea, the angel of Ephesus. And so he says, I'm charging you, I'm commanding you, uh, that you need to do these things in this list here, of how they should treat the widows, the younger women, everything in chapter 5, okay? Without partiality, okay? Without that, meaning don't have respect of persons. Without a deference, in this case. Because, oh, no, I'm just going to, uh, if the husband says sin, I'm just going to do it because, hey, I'm supposed to submit. No. Uh, if the parent of church says sin or the government says sin, you're just going to defer. Because, you know, no. It says without preferring one another doing nothing by partiality, okay? Um, now, there's two sides to defer. One is what we've covered three or four years ago and what we just talked about now, of ways that we could um, um, defer to each other. Uh, give, me, give me a couple of examples real quick of how you could defer in, in regular, you know, day-to-day -day life. Yes? I mean, personal? Yeah, or? yeah. You or, can do personal or theological, whatever. Uh, I, I suppose for like the church, it would be on outreach, um, being the one that goes and gets everything set up instead of the pastor having to do it. Or, yes. And um, personal would be, uh, hey, I'll watch the baby while you go take a shower first. Yeah. To my wife or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So you say, I'll defer, even though I'm stinking, I really want to take a shower and I deserve to go first. Uh, I'm going to defer and let her go first. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Children? Give me an example. One from each of you. Who's first? You say, I defer. <laughs> Alina, how can you defer? Uh, bring, bring help and desire out to, um, if she asks me to do something to get for her. I get for her instead of saying she could just get it. Mm hmm. Yeah. And sometimes I know you don't like to play a lot of the board games, and you don't have to, but sometimes you could defer and say, I don't really want to, but I'll do it just to hang out with my niece, Aria. You know. Aria, how can you defer? Uh, um, letting Kazai and Arena pick first. Good. Kazai, how can you defer? Um, help someone out more than what they ask. Yes. Like, um, yeah, more than what they ask. That's good. All right, so the second side of defer, so that's exa exa is words. Deferring on words. Let's go to Genesis 37, 3. Story of Joseph. Be, uh, how many scriptures do I have here? Um, I don't have a lot here. Okay, so Katarina, three and four. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age, and he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. Okay, so this is leading up to deference. Just give a little context here. So sometimes when someone has a child of their old age, 
they love that child the most because they say, that's my last child. Don't fall for that trap. Don't do that. Love them equally. Four, the brethren saw it. Mm -hmm. Brothers aren't stupid. Sisters aren't stupid. They can see that. Now, they shouldn't have hated him, but they did hate him. Therefore, they could not speak peaceably in him. I hate homos because God hates homos. And homos are reprobate and homos are rapists. I cannot speak peaceably to them. Not unless I'm running a Jehu operation. I cannot speak peaceably to them. Okay, they're, I'm not going to be friends with them. And so if, if certain people hate Christians, like certain family members of mine that won't talk to me because they hate me, they cannot speak peaceably to me. They can't do it because of the hatred. All right, this leads up to my life. Five to eight. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it, he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. All the way to verse 8. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we are uh, binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheaf arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheaves stood around about and made of obeisance to my sheaf. And his brethren said, said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. Yep. Question. Could Joseph have deferred to tell his dreams to his older brothers? Yeah. <laughs> yes. He could have deferred to say that. So, words. At times, should you defer to say some words? Yes. Amen. Proverbs 29, 11. That'll be Keziah reading. The sooner you realize that you don't know it all, the sooner you'll defer in some of your words. We are a street preaching church, so obviously I'm not talking about rebuking out on the street here. Although sometimes you do let some things slide. From sitting, or it's just because there's so many of them, you have to pick which questions to answer and who to handle. Proverbs 29 11. She'll learn to furnish, but she's like probably two and a half or three. A fool uttereth all his mind, but a wise man keepeth it until afterwards. Underline that first part. A fool uttereth all his mind. They just won't shut up. You know, there may be a time you're joking around like 20 minutes before lunch and you're like, oh man, fish and barbecue looks good, the shrimp looks good, the old taco looks good, but you're not like that 10 hours a day. Doc, 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 yak, 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 yak. A fool uttereth all his mind. Do you understand that, children? There is a time to talk and there is a time to shut up. Yeah. You know, when they're young in the Lord, they're just uttering all their mind, you know. That's fine. I mean, I get it. You know, hopefully over six or 12 months, they'll learn to be quiet some and listen more. God did give you two ears and one mouth. That's a good quote. I mean, most people should listen four times as much as they talk, let alone twice. Um, what did Mary do when she found out that she was chosen to have... God in flesh burst out of her. Yes? She, she kept it in her heart. Yep. The Bible, she hid those words in her heart. She pondered on those things in her heart. Yep. Yep. Um, so that's it for deference. Unless you have any questions or comments. Not a, not a complex teaching. Just something we need to do. Did Jesus defer on the cross? I'm sure he hated the pain. Nails in the hands. Hard to breathe. Like we saw in the Jesus movie last week, they had to make a choice. Do I suffer this way or do I lift myself up in more pain to take a breath? Because if I stay down low, it's less pain on the nail through the feet and the hands. And I can breathe. But if I lift myself up and I take the pain in my nails and the feet, and I pull myself up, I can breathe easier. Which pain do I want? He deferred for your sins and died on the cross for your sins. Left heaven. So, God always leads by example. So 
but he definitely deferred. Apostle Paul deferred. Peter deferred. Every true elder and deacon defers. And if someone can't defer, then, then they are either not saved or they're a baby Christian. And they, need to, they need to learn these things. They'll, they'll learn it quick in a real church. In a fake church, they'll let them go for years. As long as they tithe, they don't care. Okay. <laughs> they'll defer to correct them because they're tithing. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Initiative. Initiative would also be kind of like um, steps of faith. Steps of faith. And uh, I'll read the Webster Dictionary, but then I'm going to just tell you what I, I believe is kind of a better a better dictionary here. Uh, definition. Where did it go? Initiative. Uh, introductory step. Took the initiative to try to settle the issue. Energy or aptitude displayed an in initiative of action. Enterprise. The right to initiate a legislative action, a procedure enabling the specified number of voters by petition to propose a law to secure the submission of blah, blah, blah. Um, enterprise would be attempting to perform or attempt a project, particularly bold, hazardous undertaking, either moral or physically. The attack of Stony Point was a bold, successful enterprise. The attempt to evangelize the heathen or noble enterprises. Uh, I wrote a simpler definition, maybe. Seeing a need and doing it before being asked. <laughs> there you go. That's initiative. I see this need. I'm going to do it before being asked. I'll tell you a story of when James was young in the Lord. About two years in. And I'd always say each night, as a discipling him, he lived with us. Well, he didn't live with like six months he didn't live with us, but then he lived with us again. He lived down the street from us. Quaker. But they live with us. And so each night I'd be like, hey, take out the trash. Hey, take out the trash. And he, he did, he took out the trash. Then I taught on initiative of what's the definition? Seeing a need and doing it before being asked. And literally the next day I look and it was evening and the trash was out. And I looked at him, I said, hey, way to take initiative. Got annoying saying it over and over again. Sometimes people seem to be told. Marriage counseling, what did I say? I said, teach each other your, your personal statutes. I like five cream, five sugar. My wife knows my statute of how I like this. So yeah, just teach it her. She can't, you can't read minds. And if you're going to serve each other, at least serve each other the way they like to be served. That's the longest long sin, you know. And so uh, taking initiative, seeing a need before being asked. So what ways, uh, synonyms, let me give the synonyms first. Action, ambition, enterprise, hustle, go, or drive. They've got drive, they've got hustle, they've got that enterprise. So in what ways, uh, and we could do theological, missionary, or uh, also personal, in what ways can you take initiative? I'll go first. The snow reminded me. On Thursday, if it's still on the ground, which is my duty to do anyway, to protect the delicate feet of the wife and children before my wife would ask, which she will ask if it's not done, and I'll do it because it's not, it's not like she's not bossing me around. It's one of those things I do automatically. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna, Lord help me remember. I'm gonna take the initiative, and I'll recruit James because he's a man too. We're gonna, we're gonna make a safe pathway of removing the snow by hand with our muscles and a shovel and maybe even rock salt to get that 15 feet cleared as a pathway to the cars. That's, I can't pat myself in the back. I haven't done it. Uh, that's how I'm going to take initiative in, in the name of Jesus. And then, of course, on the spiritual side, we are going to keep preaching campuses. we got a few good ones to preach out here. I don't want to mention on film yet. Uh, it'll be a surprise. And keep preaching uh, other things and taking the initiative to hopefully write at least one, one Jesus book in the next two years. I'd like to do it before December. We get settled and whatnot, you know? Take initiative. So I have a few few goals of initiative to take. All right, y'all, how can you take initiative? I didn't even have to ask for my water. My wife took the initiative and brought it and set it there. Since literally the first week pastoring in 2016. Cleaning goes before being asked to. Boom! You got it. Do you love Owen? Mm -hmm. What if they forget it? What if your parents forget and you forget? Owen will be swimming in his poop for an extra 24 hours. No one cares, loves Owen more than you do. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shoot straight with you. Do you love Owen more than your parents? Yeah, you do. <laughs> you see, they both shake their head yes. Am I right? I'm not saying they don't love Owen. They do love Owen. But you love Owen more. I'll be honest with you. The girls love the cats more than I love the cats. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't mean I hate Abby and Julia. I love them too. I do love them. They're great cats. I love them. They're, they're better than other cats. But they love them more. So they need to take the initiative. All right, who else? How can you take initiative? Not all of you need to say anything. Does anybody else have anything? No, most of you take the initiative pretty good. Most of you take the initiative pretty good. I think so. Okay. Um, so, can sinners, um, oh no, I want to show a scripture, Job 5.12, because one of the synonyms was enterprise, and I thought, I was like, oh, look at that, that's interesting. Job 5.12 would be Arya's turn to read. And uh, this is when one of his um, sinner goat friends um, is uh, speaking. But as you know, sometimes they say things that are true. Like all false teachers, they mix in some, some truth with false. One of them's a Judaizer, one of them's a hyper-grace dreamer, one of them's a young, prideful guy. Uh, read when you're there, Arya, 512. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Their hands cannot perform their initiative, their dreams, their goals. Why? Because sin is never satisfied. That's why. It'll never arrive. They'll say, oh, but I wanted this. And then once they get it, they're going to say, now I wanted this. <laughs> and when they get that, they're going to say, I wanted this. Yeah. You know? It's never satisfied. So they will not perform their, their initiative, their enterprise. So God took the first initiative in all the different areas. Uh, we uh, must have a God-centered theology, not a man-centered theology. And I'm going to be talking about this in the sovereignty of God. A God-centered theology of how do we raise our kids according to God. A, how do we street preach according to how God... What gives glory to God on how we disciple? Should, how harsh we should be or how loose we should be? Should be correction or admonition? How should it be? God-centered theology, not, hey, I'm going to street preach this way because I think more people get saved that way with this humanistic mindset. I'm going to raise kids this way because I think this psychology article said this and this guy said that. When the Bible says, no, do it this way and that way. A God-centered theology. So God took the first initiative in all the areas. God first created the heavens and earth. He did that first. God created Adam and Eve. He took the initiative. He did not need Adam and Eve. He does not need you or need man. He made man for his enjoyment, but he did not need a bride. He wanted a bride. He wanted someone who loved him back freely. God first called Noah. Noah was living right, so he qualified, but God called him. God first called Abraham. God called Moses. Took the initiative. God took the initiative and gave his holy law, which blessed the nation of Israel and gave them the keys for dominion. God took the initiative. God came in flesh as Jesus Christ, taking the initiative. Let's go to 1 John 4, 19. This is Helena's scripture to read. Very important scripture should should humble you. Read. We love him because he first loved us. Read it again. We love him because he first loved us. Put your name in there. I love God because he first loved me. I love Jesus because he first loved me. You, you do have free will and salvation. We'll talk about that today. Mm -hmm. But he could have reprobated you. Now, I don't, he wouldn't have reprobated any of the children. They have not sinned anywhere near any of that level. 
uh, but the rest of us, you say, well, where is that exact line? Well, we know it's for the homos. It wasn't any of us. We know it's for the super false teachers. We get that super religious, you know, type people. Um, but, uh, you know, there's some people that have went reprobate that didn't quite go as far as Apostle Paul killing Christians. And then there's people like Apostle Paul who did not go reprobate. Uh, God has free will, and he decides where enough is enough for people. Uh, which is why I really like that one worship song. You may have already have crossed the line. So another synonym for initiative was steps of faith, taking steps of faith. So all of Hebrews 11, uh, the Hall of Fame of Faith, uh, Hall of Fame of Faith, is men of God taking initiative, men of God taking steps of faith. And so taking initiative, children, is a way to ward off slothfulness and self-centeredness. I could, I could say, because I'm just, you know, tempted with sloth, and I could be like, you know, women, children, just walk through that snow. It's only 10 feet. It's not that that's that slippery. Well, maybe to me it's not that slippery because I have amazing balance. Because God made me that way. Okay? <laughs> I can't spell worth a lick, but I have good balance. Okay? So that's not slippery to me. Okay? But I have slipped and fallen a few times in my life, and it does hurt and reminds me that I don't have perfect balance. <laughs> um, and so, taking initiative will ward off that slothfulness and self-centeredness if I chose to not get the snow out of the way to the pathway. So you taking initiative, Aria, to clean that tank saves your parents the, uh, I have to remind her again, they have a list of, in their head already of to do. Now, your dad has a very big list to do in his head, and your mom has a list to do, to cook and take care of the baby. It's like, now I got her also remember to tell her to do that too. It was a great day when I, when my wife told me, I, I, cause I was like, Hey, have the kids, feed the cats. It was years ago. This time she goes, no, no, they do it automatically. I was like, oh, cool. We got to the point we don't have to tell them anymore all the time. It's like, that's great. You know? So once in a while, when they mess up on it, then it's like, hey, this is a big deal. Because you already took the initiative for like six months straight. Why did you all of a sudden forget to feed your animal that you claim to love? What if I didn't feed you that day? And so taking initiative, yeah, wards off slothfulness. Um, I've said this, I think, last week. If not, I said it a few years ago. And we're about done. Some of these traits come naturally to people. Uh, last week we did diligence. You know, some people are really good at deferring. They're just like doormats. Some people are really aggressive. Go get They come very naturally to people, even unsaved people. So just because some people have some of these traits, does that mean that they are saved? No. Correct. It doesn't mean they're automatic. It doesn't mean they're saved. They won't have them all. And under pressure, they won't have them. And under persecution, they won't have it. In times of trying, they won't have them. You know, we look at the fruit of the Spirit, some of them might have a couple of those, or at least appear to. But they don't have the true thing under there. Like, they would appear to have love, but then later they don't. So I tell about my mom's new marriage, her third one now. I said, oh, we'll, we'll see uh, when one of them's in their sick bed. When, if it's a slow death. Now, if it's one of those ones where they die in like 30 days, of course they're going to stick it out and be fine. I'm talking about one of those ones where they're dying like Pastor Marvin's wife for like a year and a half. That's when I'll know if he really loves my mom or in reverse if she really loves him because she wasn't even there for her own mom when her mom was dying. She's getting annoyed having to visit in the hospice over and over and over again. She, she confessed it to me. She went, wow, you're really selfish. Isn't it? And I said, yeah, yeah, you are selfish. <laughs> you know? Like, so I, I don't know the true love because talk is cheap and action is louder than words. So they have some form of love, some form of temperance. or some business guys I know that look like they have amazing self-control. Just the way that they can manage 20, 30 employees more than I had and add budgets and, and other things. And, and it's the way they presented themselves and mastermind me. It's like, oh, wow, the dude has a lot of self-control. He's a little, I mean, a ninja master that James knows. I didn't know. He's a, the guy that, well, he wasn't a ninja. Or, well, what, what a crop, he wasn't crop Maga. What is that? Kemp, Kemp, what's the name of the thing I'm looking for? Judo. Yeah. Did he have self-control? In judo, <laughs> but not in whoremongering, <laughs> or whatever other sin it may have been. <laughs> hey, what's worse than worse? <laughs> That's just, I don't know why I'm 
when you find out six months into your judo wrestling partner that he's a homo. That would be worse. I guess what would be worse than wrestling a judo homo is finding out that the guy that trained you for six months is a homo. Yeah. Yeah. You'd only know that if you weren't saved, but you weren't saved back then. Maybe he was gay games. <laughs> That's a joke. So, I think we need to take the initiative on evangelism. You know, in these due times, God manifests His word through preaching, and not too many other people are doing it with the law of God, giving a specific list of sins. We we'll had friendly conversations at Walmart. We had one the other day. But as soon as my wife gave that list of sins, dun 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 dun, she mm -hmm. shut down. And said, she was a Christian too. She shut down and changed right then. So we need to keep taking that initiative. Initiative in our morning prayer time, mm -hmm. even when you're tired. Initiative in your Bible reading. If you don't get to it in the morning, you get to it at night. Initiative in warning against the beast. I'll take the battle to the gate. You know, and we, we're going to get an initiative against the LGBT nation. Take the battle to the gate. Uh, initiative in discipleship. I don't like the reactive discipleship. It's proactive, which is why people get offended. I'm like, if you're not disciplining your kid, I'm going to have to start doing it. <laughs> okay? I'm going to be, I'm gonna have to be proactive on this. I'm done. Questions or comments about initiative? Or can you give me a couple examples of people in the Bible that took initiative? Well, in Hebrews 11, <laughs> um, but uh, specifically it would be um, Moses in what leaving, way? leaving Egypt. He took the initiative to go. Did he kill a cop on the way out, too? Yes. He did. That's the video I was going to make. Yeah. <laughs> We're a Moses and Elijah cop killers. Yeah. We should do that one right now. Amen. Yeah. Hit that button.